if you say blood was in heaven, what happened in heaven to make Jesus bleed? Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> Amen. Name one thing. Glory take God. You need an apostle, brother. Yes, you do. Name one thing. One thing. That happened Amen. in heaven that made Jesus bleed. Hey guys, before we continue, I found that 84% of you who watch these videos are not subscribed. Click that subscribe button to support truth and click the like button to keep these videos circulated within the YouTube algorithm. Thank you for your support and truth. Let's get back to it. Name one thing, one thing. that happened Amen. in heaven mm. that made Jesus bleed. Okay. Jesus is not bleeding in heaven because his earthly body was glorified by God the Father. In John 17, 1 and 2, Christ lifted his eyes up to heaven and said, Father, the hour has come. Glorify your son that your son may also glorify you. Pause. Now, can a regular man pray this prayer to God? Ask yourself that. Can a regular man pray this prayer to God, asking God to glorify him, knowing that God said, no flesh shall glory in my presence? Okay, can I just go to God and say, God, glorify me so that I glorify you? No, because I am a sinner who needs to repent. Then God will give me a regenerated body, not a glorified body, a regenerated body. And this meat suit got to return to dust. But Gino says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, according to 1 Corinthians 15 50. So, by the way, when the scriptures say inherit the kingdom of God, it means going into the presence of God. Okay? Because you're going into his house, which is heaven. In addition to that, 1 Corinthians 1 29 says no flesh shall glory in God's presence. Then why is Christ in the flesh telling the father to glorify him? Because Christ was without sin. Adam was taken from the dust and walked in the presence of God. So I just gave you two examples of flesh that gloried in God's presence. Because it's all about whether or not the flesh sin, dude. And now you got to find out when was it cold with the vexture? Right. And when was it dipped in blood? That's right. Give me Isaiah. Isaiah chapter 63. Chapter 63. And we'll start with verse 1. <laughs> yeah. Amen. Who is that? Who is he that cometh from Edom? Oh, thank God. That's coming from where? From Edom. From where? From Edom. How is he coming? From Edom with dyed garments oh, of Bozra. His garment is dyed. Dyed. Dyed garment. Something happened to him to make his garment change colors. That's right. Huh? That's right. That's the vexture. That's right. The vexture is the garment that was dyed. That's right. All right. Who is he that cometh from Edom with dyed garments from Bozra? Dyed garment from Bozra. This that is glorious in his apparel. He's glorious where? In his apparel. Okay. You heard him say, Christ comes from Edom, gloried in his apparel. Well, this hasn't happened yet because the scriptures mention the destruction of Edom, that Edom will be desolate. That is mentioned in Joel 3.19. Christ first came to be a lamb sacrificed for our sin. When he returns, he is coming with the sword. You know, they call it the day of the Lord. Joel 3.19 says Egypt shall be a desolation and Edom shall be a desolate wilderness for the violence against the children of Judah because they have shed innocent blood in their land. It's talking about these Edomites here in America, the so-called white man who instituted the transatlantic slave trade, the prison industrial complex. He also instituted Planned Parenthood uh, eugenics, uh, facilitated drugs into our communities while they sit and dwell in the comfort of their homes, uh, taking their kids to karate practice, soccer moms, and kissing their dogs in the mouth. All right. Isaiah 63, 3 
says, I will tread them in my anger and trample them in my fury, and their blood shall be sprinkled upon my garments. See, Gino would never talk about this stuff. He would never talk about judgment against Edom for the way they treated God's chosen people. Now, I know I went off into the forthcoming judgments against Edom, but I just wanted to give backstory on the meaning of Isaiah 63 because Gino would never preach about the judgments against Edom. It is at this point that Christ has been glorified in Isaiah 63. He's already been glorified as he prayed in John 17. Okay, there is a difference between a glorified body and a regenerated body. Christ did not have to repent, so he did not have a regenerated body. In other words, one body that goes back to the dirt, and since flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom, that body has to rot in the dirt, then God will give them a new body. That's not what it's talking about when God raised Christ. Okay. Now, uh, keep going, son. Then, then we got to get Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John uh, when we when he had that apparel on. Right. All right. This that is glorious in his apparel. Right. Yeah. Traveling in the greatness of his strength. Then I also want to get when they cast lots for it. Right. All right. I that speak in righteousness, uh -huh. mighty to save. Uh -huh. Wherefore art thou red? Wait a minute. You're red with what? In thine apparel. All right. uh -huh. Cannot understand how he did not express the true meaning of Isaiah 63. He doesn't even explain whose blood is on the garments of Christ. He was red in thine apparel when he was on the cross. That's right. When they pierced him in the side. Yes, That's right. And the blood came from that wound. Yeah. Died his garment or stained his garment. That's right. The garment was the vexture. Yeah. Now let's get the New Testament Amen. and get to the cross quick. Okay, so Gino was saying Isaiah 63 is a metaphor of what already took place on the cross. You lie, you lie, you lie. You are a liar. See how he moved quick from that scripture? He never tells who Edom is and why God or uh, tread them in fury and vengeance. And he's always looking up. Notice how he's always looking up at the ceiling. I mean, that's that's a demon inside of him. Cross quickly. Quickly, back in, now in St. John chapter 19. All right. And at verse 32. We'll follow begin. me, follow me now. St. John 19 and at verse 32. Oh, dumb Catholics and all these other folks. You see when I asked the, the brother during the debate, is flesh in heaven? He said, yeah. yeah, yeah. And when William's red, flesh and blood, Cannot inherit the kingdom of God. He he, he was dumbfounded. <laughs> yes, he was. He was dumbfounded. That's right. Huh? That's right. Now notice, ignorant men said blood was in heaven because they read Revelation without revelation. Okay, so that we rightly divide the word of truth. I'm going to quickly read these scriptures back to back and repeat myself to prove that Gino is a liar. Also, I would document these scriptures in the description box. Romans 3 verse 4, let God be true and every man a liar. Okay, if we took that scripture literally, like Geno takes 1 Corinthians 15 50, which says flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, then we would be calling Christ, who was also a man, we would be calling him a liar like all men. You see that. But Gino said there is no blood in heaven. You know, first Corinthians one twenty nine says no flesh. This is God talking. No flesh shall glory in my presence. Now, if we apply that to all men, including Christ, then Adam never existed because his flesh had to be in the presence of God for him to create him before he sinned. And Christ would have needed a new body to enter heaven, although he was without sin. Also, Christ would have needed to repent for telling the Father to glorify him in John 17, 1, when God already said, no flesh shall glory in his presence in 1 Corinthians 1, 29. Do you see how stupid that sounds? Let me say it again one more time. 
Romans 3, 4. Let God be true and every man a liar. Okay. Again, if we take that scripture, the way that Geno frames it, then 1 Corinthians 15, 50, flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. We would be calling Christ, who is also a man, we would be calling him a liar like all men. Because Geno said, 1 Corinthians 15, 50 refers to all men that they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. Flesh and blood, there's no blood in heaven. So it applies to all men that they cannot inherit the kingdom of God. They knew they need a new body. So in other words, he's denouncing the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Okay, he's not necessarily denouncing that he died and was buried, but he's denouncing the resurrection. So where does this new God appear? Okay, because again, Geno is also on record saying that Jesus Christ is God. So how did Christ get back into heaven? If flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, that he would need a new body, according to his logic. And again, 1 Corinthians 1 29, God said, No flesh shall glory in my presence. If we applied that to all men, including Christ, again, then Adam, whom God took from the dust of the earth, never existed. Okay, he had he needed to exist to first be in the presence of God walking with God in the cool of the day, okay? And Christ would have needed a new body to enter heaven, although he was without sin, okay? And Christ would have needed to repent for telling the Father in John 17, 1, when God already said no flesh shall glory in his presence in 1 Corinthians 1, 29, Christ would have needed to repent in John 17, 1, by asking the Father to glorify him, that he may also glorify the Father. You see that. This is why I say Geno Jennings does not believe Jesus is who he said he was. The Christ said, I am. He said, before Abraham was, I am. Meaning he never stopped being God. He never took a break from being God. Okay? The incorruptible is the all-knowing, eternal God. All right? He's saying God took a break from being God. See how being a heretic can take you down a rabbit hole that says something else that you're conveying to others that you're trying to say Jesus is God, and you're trying to denounce him being in the flesh, that flesh cannot be God. But now when you're going around in circles saying that, you're denouncing the entire deity of Christ as God. What's the point of a miracle if we are not awestruck by how Christ was raised by God and that he is God? Okay, this false apostle wants us to be awestruck by him. So he tells you Christ couldn't do this or he couldn't do that. And I can do this better than him. I mean, this is what this false prophet been saying in his message. He doesn't even understand that Hebrews 4.12 says the word of God is living and powerful. Okay, it that means it takes power for God to time travel and be separate from himself to redeem man of his sins. Not because he is schizophrenic, but because he is incompatible with sin. And Christ would become a curse for our sake, according to Galatians 3.13. So Hebrews 4.12 continues saying that the word pierces even to the division of soul and spirit and joints and marrow. So in the flesh, the Romans pierce Christ. In the spirit, God, who is Christ, pierced unto the division. Okay. Because sin causes separation, even God to be separate from himself. So Christ, who is God, could not become a curse for us if he did not time travel and separate from himself as a lamb to be sacrificed. And that is the greatest miracle that Christ ever did. This is also why Christ showed Thomas his hands and where they had pierced him in his side after he rose again. This was proof that Christ was without sin. He had to show him that he was without sin. 
and now he can ascend into heaven in an earthly body that was glorified and sit at the right hand of the father. Glory to God. Adam couldn't do it because he sinned in Genesis 3. Prior to that, he wasn't appointed to return back to dust. Okay, God didn't appoint Adam or curse him to return back to dust until after he sinned. So flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom. That's referring, 1 Corinthians 15, 50, that's referring to an unregenerate man. Okay. That's all men who have sinned, not God, who is Jesus. Undoubtedly, Gino is a false teacher. I mean, his teachings are limited and elementary. It's really straight from his flesh. Okay. He doesn't break down how the Holy Spirit was not sent to live inside Adam before he had sinned. He doesn't break down how the disciples didn't have to fast. So long as Christ walked in the flesh among them, I suggest you run from false apostles like this. See, this is why he couldn't cast the demon out. Okay. He doesn't even believe in Christ. He doesn't even believe in the full deity of Christ. Okay. He doesn't believe in, again, the awestruck of Christ, how we are awestruck by the greatest miracle that Christ ever did. He's a false apostle. Okay. He's worse than Dow. Let me tell you that Dow, if you don't see Dow from a mile away, then I don't know what to tell you. Okay. Dow is more obvious. Okay. Gino is a real serpent. Okay. He mixes a lot of truth and he, he's more of an angel of light. Okay. A lot of his dirt is not exposed to the public. He does a real good job at concealing his demons. All right. So, Watch and pray and be wary. That's why Christ said, beware of false prophets. They, all, they don't all come in the same package. All right? Don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife. It's all about faiths and gates. You got to have faith and you're going to need God's grace.